Well, hey everybody, it's Sandy and welcome back to my channel dedicated to helping you advocate for your own health one topic at a time. So guys, today I want to do the first in what I think will probably be a series, like a playlist of videos that I want to do on C. diff, Clostridium difficile. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's a horrible intestinal infection that pretty much destroys the flora of your gut. Um, it's too broad a topic in and of itself, but having just gone through it and having had a C. diff infection recently, which was right after my surgery for my thumb, don't even ask how awful that was. Um, I've learned a lot and I feel like I was really lucky in a lot of ways and I'd like for my viewers to benefit from my um, lessons and today as the first video in that series I want to talk about why I think that if you are diagnosed with C. diff or a loved one is diagnosed with C. diff that you should discuss with your provider whether you or that person um, are a candidate for deficit as the first line of treatment instead of the typical vancomycin. So, yeah, let me just insert my usual disclaimer, which is that I'm not giving any individual medical advice on this channel, nothing that I say should be deemed a substitute for the advice of your own practitioner. I'm rather trying to help arm you with a lot of information and questions that you might ask, because in my experience, uh, there's a lot of things that just don't even come up in the doctor's office. So let me tell you the bottom line so I don't bury the lead on this. Deficit is considered the first line treatment for C. diff, hands down, Vanco is not even a close second if you're only looking at medical literature. It often doesn't come up in the discussion with the doctor uh, because it is expensive. Now, not that that is not a consideration. Of course, it's a consideration, but it is not a medical consideration. So in my opinion, uh, this is a lapse of judgment on the part of a medical practitioner to not bring that up. As medical practitioners, we are all obligated to discuss with our patients uh, treatments, alternatives, risks, benefits. Um, nowhere does it say that we should omit things and decide for people that something's going to be too expensive for them. In fact, quite the contrary, we are obligated to discuss with patients um, the risks and benefits and the treatment options and alternatives. And uh, if, if one item is the best line, the first line of treatment with no close second, even though it's expensive and the insurance company is very likely going to deny coverage, uh, it is still, in my opinion, incumbent upon a practitioner to discuss it. However, I am finding more and more as the years go by um, that lately, uh, in the last decade or so, that there's more and more of this behavior where we just omit things because we assume that because the insurance company isn't going to pay for it and we don't want to bother calling and prevailing upon the insurance company or you know whatever it might be, it just gets omitted from the discussion. So my goal today is to tell you a little bit about deficit. The other name for this, the um, generic name is fidexamycin. Um, it is a treatment specifically for a Clostridium difficile. There is no other antibiotic that is specifically for this disease. Um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about it and why it is head and shoulders uh, better than vancomycin. And therefore, you can have a discussion with your own practitioner and at least ask. If it doesn't come up, ask, am I a candidate for this drug? Um, whether the insurance is going to pay for it is a second discussion. Yeah, so... Um, vancomycin, like I said, is largely often used first. Um, I think that what I'm hearing these days is that there is a difference between infectious disease doctors and gastroenterologists or primary doctors, whereas the infectious disease doctors tend to be more pure academicians, and I think they're a little more likely to say, oh, fidaxomycin or deficit uh, right away. I think I got really lucky because when I was diagnosed with my C. diff infection, it was the beginning of a weekend, and it was really through a friend of a friend that I got put in touch with a um, infectious disease doctor first, which is unlikely. Okay, and so that infectious disease doctor said, no, 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 don't do the Vanco, there's a new drug out there. So again, the reason that most people don't um, go to this drug first is because it is very expensive, but I am going to talk to you a little bit about, um, there is a workaround for a lot of people um, in that deficit has on its website one of those coupon programs where um, depending on whether you qualify and you won't qualify if you have any kind of a government insurance or Medicare, but if you have private insurance, you very well might qualify to pay no more than $50 for your copay instead of something like 3500 or five grand okay so um, let's just talk about the issue with C. diff and why deficit is the better drug just speaking in purely medical terms and the reason is that one of the biggest 
problems with C. diff is not uh, whether you can cure the initial infection, it's the high incidence of a recurrence. So something like 25% of people who are treated with vancomycin will still get a recurrence. Now, uh, C. diff, for anybody who's gotten C. diff, you know how miserable it is. It just tears up your gut. It causes all kinds of other problems. A lot of people get a post-infectious irritable bowel syndrome. I've got a little bit of that. That's actually quite common. Um, some people find themselves intolerant to dairy, intolerant to gluten afterwards. There's all kinds of things they have to kind of learn about themselves, but it can also cause much more serious problems. It causes um, very frequent watery diarrhea. That's your first sign that you've got uh, C. diff is that you, maybe you've just come off an antibiotic that's real high risk and like maybe a week or two weeks later, you're suddenly having very frequent, completely watery diarrhea. It's a very good chance that's C. diff. Um, that has to be tested. But the way it works is that some people actually carry C. diff. Uh, you could carry it in its inactive form. It's just a spore. The bacteria lays around dormant in spores. But when the right set of circumstances comes up, like for example, you've been on an antibiotic that has wiped out a good part of your gut microbiome and that's what normally keeps those spores in check, then all of a sudden the C. diff can become active and start um, proliferating in your colon. It will elicit a toxin that will then destroy the lining of your colon. That takes a long time to heal. Um, in elderly or more frail or sick people, it's actually quite dangerous. Some people lose a part of their colon. They have to have some surgery and have something excised. Um, some people die from C. diff depending on what comorbidities you bring to the table, how old you are, how frail you are, etc. So it is a nasty infection that you really want to avoid and you therefore really want to avoid a recurrence. Once you get it, you want to get your gut microbiome healthy and keep it that way. So that's where the deficit in the vancomycin really differ. Now it used to be that flagyl was in the mix, but that's fallen out of favor and I don't think anybody considers flagyl a viable option for treatment of C. diff anymore. But you know, vancomycin and deficit are both pretty similar in terms of the cure rate for the first time infection. It's right around 85%, something like that. Um, depending on who you read, it might even look like the vanco is like a couple percentage points better than the deficit, but it doesn't reach statistical significance, so it's really no different. Um, but the difference is in the recurrence rate, whereas if you take vancomycin, you still have about a 25% chance of a recurrence. That's one in every four people treated with that will get a second infection. And every time you get a recurrence, the risk goes up higher. Um, after that, for a third recurrence, it's something like one in three, so a 33% chance. So you really don't want to go there. Um, after that, you can start talking with your doctor about fecal microbiota transplants, which is really considered the gold standard, um, but you don't qual. It's it's under it's not FDA approved yet it's it's under uh, certain emergency use authorization so um, I think the criteria are that once you've had it three times you can discuss whether you're a candidate for a fecal microbiota transplant but that's beyond the scope of this video so nonetheless most people who have had C. diff know how miserable it is how debilitating it can be and even though maybe the fecal transplant sounds like something you'd want in the end, at that time, you don't want to go through having the infection two or three times in order to get it. You'd rather just get healthy. Um, so these, the deficit really shines in terms of its ability to reduce the risk of recurrence, whereas the vanco is about 25% or one in four. Um, with deficit, it's about 13%, maybe up to 15 is about the highest I've read. So it's quite a bit better. Uh, another way that they are different is that the deficit is bactericidal, meaning it will kill the bacteria and it is specific for C. diff bacteria. So it will not harm the other bacteria in the gut microbiome. It won't harm whatever healthy bacteria there might be. Now, given you've just had a C. diff infection, there might not be much there, but you can certainly start um, rebuilding that. And if you're taking a probiotic, it's, not, it's just not going to harm any of the good bacteria that you want there. Um, whereas with the Vanco, because it is a broader spectrum, it's, a, it's more of a standard antibiotic that will not only kill what you're taking it for, but it will kill other bacteria as well. So even though you're rid of the C. diff at the end of the treatment, let's say theoretically, or maybe it's not down to zero, but let's say you're mostly rid of it enough that the infection is considered cured, but now you're still left with a substandard gut microbiome, which was the problem in the first place and why you couldn't keep the infection, this, those spores in check in the first place. So um, you're already starting out at higher risk and you can see the risk of the recurrent infection. Yeah, so the vancomycin is, it, it's just, 
in more ways than one, it renders you more likely to, it's, it's not causing the recurrence, but having that instead of the deficit, you're putting yourself at more risk for having that recurrent infection. And then of course, you're, like I said, you're at risk for having a third one and that, that risk goes up and up and up. So the other thing is it is bacteriostatic vancomycin. It's not bactericidal, so it inhibits growth, but it doesn't kill the bacteria. But again, then it inhibits the growth of some of the good bacteria in there as well. Now, you can take probiotics with either of these. You're going to be better off taking probiotics either way. Um, but with the vancomycin, of course, you'd want to be careful on how you time it. You don't want to take the probiotic and the vancomycin within like a couple hours of each other, let's say, because you'll be just killing all of the probiotic off. But you're still going to be killing some off because you're achieving a blood level of vancomycin when you're treating the infection for 10 days or so. Um, whereas with the deficit, that's just not a concern because, again, it is specific for the C. diff bacteria. Now, um, another point that I think is just a little bit underappreciated is that there is a prolonged effect from the deficit. So even after the course of the antibiotic is over, um, it will keep working against C. diff for a little time longer. Um, and again, not disrupting the other, the rest of the flora that you're hopefully building back in the meantime and while you're getting better. Um, I think that having been through this now and taken the deficit, so the way I ended up with deficit first is just this very lucky set of coincidences where I, I happened to get C. diff, I was diagnosed over the weekend, the beginning of a weekend, and it was through a, a friend of mine and a colleague that I got put in touch with a, an infectious disease doctor right away. And I think the infectious disease doctors are a little more like academicians at heart and they're not quite as caught up with like they, 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 they don't do quite as much patient care and one-on-one -on -one face to face stuff but um, you know they're more like well deficit is what we have right now the fidaxomycin is the first line of treatment that's that's what we're going to use now um, I'm just one person that was just one experience but you know having worked in gastroenterology for a really long time doing GI anesthesia um, I have been really humbled by this experience in um, just hearing from patients and um, people who had transitioned over to uh, um, an infectious disease doctor and finding you know a pretty big difference between um, the depth of knowledge on this disease with the infectious disease doctor versus the gastroenterologist and I was frankly quite surprised now most of us are going to end up with the gastroenterologist if not the primary um, I certainly would suggest that you go to your GI gastroenterologist over your primary doctor most people aren't going to get into an infectious disease doctor right away with something like this so that would be a while so you definitely want to go in there armed so that you can have a discussion a full open discussion with your GI doctor and for me, I just thought that was the purpose for me of this video. It's frankly the larger purpose of my channel is to help people advocate for themselves. And I think that starts with, first of all, telling people some of the behind the scenes. So well, this is where this comes from and this is why you might not hear about this. But, you know, also here's some of the questions you might ask. So if you are so unfortunate as to find that uh, you have a C. diff infection, I cannot overstate how important it is. I think that you ask that provider that you're speaking to whether you might be a candidate for deficit and if they don't know about deficit ask them to look it up with you sitting right there um now as far as the money is concerned i'm going to put like i said a link down below to deficits website i was able to do the 50 dollar copay i didn't even know a thing about this because like i said i kind of got connected up with an infectious disease doctor right away didn't even go over that aspect of it um, but it turned out when i got to the pharmacy the pharmacist had enrolled me in that program for that little savings card and you can use it something like three times uh, hopefully you're not going to need it even twice but um the the pharmacist had already initiated all that for me but i learned this all when i got there and the pharmacist said you know this is really like a five grand treatment and most people's copay is like thirty five hundred dollars but i enrolled you with this little card um so if if you qualify i know that's not going to speak to everybody because some people are on medicare or tricare or some you know government kind of insurance and i don't think that you should still try anyway, but I, I don't think that's going to um, work if you want to uh, get that discount card through deficit. But um, in knowledge is power, and it's it's important to try to just know what your options are and try to exercise them. Another thing you can do that you know doesn't always come up if you don't bring it up is you can ask your provider when you're in the room with them, uh, will you please make the case to my insurance company that uh, this is the better option for me. Um, will you help me, you know, make that case and stating, you know, why you think I'm a candidate for this and, and it's going to be better that we use this than vancomycin. 
Um, if you have certainly any issues with vancomycin in the past, that, that you know, would be something that would inform. Vancomycin does have different side effects, and well, I mean, not that Divisid doesn't, but, um, you know, if you've had any issues with Vanco in the past, that might help inform them. Um, that, you know, might it, it might just be what tilts the scales and gets the insurance company to let you use Divisid, but, um, you know, most people are going to be able to use that $50 copay coupon, so um, I wouldn't get too discouraged. Um, yeah, so... I, you know, I hope this was helpful. There are so many challenges with C. diff. Uh, another big one that I mentioned is the post-infectious irritable bowel, and I've definitely suffered with some of that. And uh, some people get almost like a little PTSD, a post-traumatic stress syndrome with this um, infection because it's almost like any little gurgling or any little, you know, trip to the bathroom or anything at all, and you think, oh, my God, I'm recurring. I'm getting a recurrence because recurrence is so scary for the reasons I've already mentioned. And it's really about looking back at the trajectory and see how you're doing over a long period of time and looking at the long pattern and not getting you know too upset and too worried about an individual episode um, but of course the earlier you are into the treatment the earlier you are post-infection the less of a long-term view you have and so it gets really scary and I'm, I'm planning to do some more videos on that in this playlist and if you have any suggestions or any questions or what you think might be a good topic because I'm trying to keep them very narrow as C. diff is way too broad a topic for any one video, um, please put your suggestions down in the description box or your, in, in the uh, comment section and any questions that you might have. In the meantime, I hope that this was helpful and please let me know if it was and until next time, be well. Bye-bye.